The film opens with tech businessman Vic Van Allen cycling on a quiet tree-lined road. Vic's small family includes his wife Melinda and their daughter Trixie. They live in a small town, Little Wesley, in Louisiana. After a while, he comes home to find Melinda waiting for him on the stairs. When Vic asks what's going on, she says nothing, just goes into the house. In the next scene, as Melinda is getting ready for a party, she has Vic choose a dress for her and asks Vic to help her put on her sandals. Vic agrees and as a gentleman, he helps her with her shoes. It is then that Melinda tells Vic she loves him very much. Soon, the couple sets off to go to the party, leaving their daughter with the nanny Chelsea. At the party, Vic and Melinda chat with their friends, have some drinks, talk about their lives. Meanwhile, Melinda spots her friend Joel and greets him. She doesn't miss the opportunity to take Joel to a private place and starts passionately kissing him. Vic can only watch her do all this. Even though Melinda notices that Vic is staring at them, she doesn't stop kissing Joel. At that moment, Vic's friend Mary approaches him and expresses her concern about Joel and Melinda being together. However, Vic tells her that he doesn't care what happens. He likes Melinda the way she is now. Later Melinda comes back to the party and starts playing the piano. Vic approaches her and simply smiles, assuring her that he is fine with everything she is doing with Joel. Soon after, Joel comes up to Vic, thanking him for allowing him to spend time with Melinda. In a private conversation, Vic asks Joel if he remembers Melinda's former lover Martin McRae who disappeared a month ago. Then he reveals it was him who made him disappear. Joel just laughs off the story, but Vic assures him he is serious. Joel gets scared, leaves the party without saying goodbye to Melinda. In the next scene, Vic comes home to find Melinda very angry with him because she also knows that Vic has killed Martin. She confronts him about threatening her lover and urges him to apologize to Joel. She also mentions that she has already invited Joel for dinner next Friday. Then, the scene shifts to Joel coming over to Vic's house for dinner. Vic greets Joel, asks him to have a seat. During dinner, Joel thanks Vic for the sandwiches and tells him that he plans to move to Mexico next week. Hearing this, Melinda tells Vic to put Trixie to bed, read her some bedtime stories, so she and Joel can be alone. Vic agrees and takes Trixie to her bedroom. After Trixie falls asleep, Vic comes downstairs to find Melinda and Joel dancing together, enjoying their time. When Melinda heads to the bathroom, she instructs Vic to make another drink for Joel. Vic goes over, approaches Joel. Joel arrogantly demands Vic to apologize. But to his surprise, Vic again tells him, it was actually him who killed Martin with a hammer. He suggests he leaves before meeting the same fate as Martin. A few days later, the family meets screenwriter Don Wilson and his wife Kelly at a party. Don asks about Vic's business, tells him he's doing well. Later, seeing Trixie and Melinda dancing, Vic asks Kelly to dance. After Kelly agrees, they start to dance. This makes Melinda very jealous, she keeps watching Vic dancing. On the way home, Melinda asks Vic if he thinks Kelly is more attractive than her. Vic admits it. She tries to prove she is better than Kelly. The couple becomes intimate as soon as they get home. The next day, Vic and Melinda watch Trixie playing with her friends at school. Just then, Vic gets a call from the bank, informing him about a recent transaction from Melinda's account to piano teacher Charlie Delisle. After making some calls to local music restaurants, Vic manages to find Charlie and goes to see him in person. Surprisingly, Melinda also arrives at the restaurant, chatting and smiling with Charlie. Vic sees her, finds out she has been seeing Charlie behind his back. One night, Melinda doesn't come home, spends the night with Charlie. When she comes home the next morning, Vic can be seen waiting for her. He approaches Melinda, asks her not to see Charlie anymore for Trixie's sake, but Melinda refuses to do so. Tells Vic that Trixie is his choice, not hers. She also details to Vic how she spent the night with Charlie and how Charlie satisfied her. In the next scene, the whole family can be seen enjoying a pool party at a friend's house. Surprisingly, Charlie is also invited to the party, and Melinda goes to greet him. She brings Charlie to meet Vic and introduces him as her piano teacher. Vic greets him, acting as if he doesn't know about their ongoing affair. Later, seeing Melinda getting closer to Charlie in front of everyone in the pool, Vic starts to feel jealous. Suddenly it starts to rain, and everyone rushes into the house, with Charlie and Vic still in the pool. After a while, Vic joins everyone inside, starts eating cookies. After not being able to find Charlie in the house, Melinda goes out to look for him. When she sees him floating in the pool, she screams for help. Everyone gets into the pool, to rescue Charlie. They try to perform CPR, but no success. Later, the police arrive and start questioning everyone there. Melinda instantly accuses Vic of drowning Charlie. Even though Vic denies it, one of the officers takes him into a room for interrogation. The police are satisfied with the statement that Charlie was drunk, held on tightly to the edge of the pool, so they leave. 
Despite this, Melinda still continues to accuse Vic of killing Charlie. Once they're back home, Vic asks Melinda if she wants a divorce because she thinks he killed Charlie. Melinda simply responds that she's not afraid of him and then walks away. The next day, as Vic is biking home, he realizes that a car is following him. One day, when Vic is at Trixie's school, he runs into Kelly. Kelly tells him that she still doesn't believe he killed Charlie and gets into a strange theoretical discussion with Melinda. Then Vic gets Kelly to calm down and offers her a ride home. But not before inviting her and Dawn to come over for dinner at their house. In the following scene, Dawn and Kelly come over to Vic's house for dinner. Not long after, Vic takes Dawn to the basement, asks him not to tell everyone that he killed Charlie. However, Dawn still believes it was Vic who killed Charlie. He demands that he take a lie detector test. Vic agrees. A few days later, Vic can be seen wandering around the market. He notices that the same car that was following him a few days ago is there, with cameras and other equipment inside. Then he looks around and finds Melinda talking to a stranger. He interrupts her conversation, and the man introduces himself as a psychiatrist named David. Here, Vic learns that David is a private investigator hired by Melinda and Don to spy on him. Soon after, Vic arrives at Don's house, accusing him of hiring a private investigator to spy on him. At first, Don tries to deny the accusation, but when Vic shows him a bank statement of Melinda transferring money to his account, he admits it. One day on his way home, Vic sees Melinda and another man strolling around the city. The man is Tony, Melinda's ex-boyfriend from college, who is currently working in the real estate industry. The next day, Melinda invites Tony over to her house for dinner and tells Vic that Tony was the first American boy she slept with. Hearing this, Vic gets angry, but he pretends to be fine behaves very friendly towards Tony. Later, when Tony and Melinda enter his bedroom and start getting intimate, Vic becomes jealous. His inner rage escalates to another level. Over the next few days, things escalate quickly, and Vic can be seen approaching Tony, inviting him to visit Melinda's new place. Tony gets into Vic's car, and he drives him to a secluded spot in the forest, asking him about his love life with Melinda. After they go deeper into the forest, Vic stops the car, throws a stone at Tony, hitting his forehead, before Tony can say anything, Vic hits him again with a larger stone, throwing Tony off a cliff. Tony's head hits a rock by the river, and he dies. Afterwards, Vic drags Tony's body into the river, and sinks it by tying some stones to it. But not before he takes out his wallet for safekeeping. The next day, Melinda suggests to Vic that they should go for a picnic at their hiking spot with Trixie. Vic agrees. The picnic spot is where Vic got rid of Tony. While Trixie is playing ball nearby, Vic and Melinda have some quality time. Vic tells her that he accepts her, and will never leave her. He also gives her a photo album with pictures that he took secretly. Soon, Vic realizes that Trixie has wandered off, so he goes to fetch her. Unfortunately, she goes to the river, where Vic had drowned Tony's body. When he gets to Trixie and asks her to come back, he notices Tony's body slightly floating near the water surface. On the drive back home, Melinda tells Vic that she left her scarf at the picnic spot. Vic replies that he'll get the scarf, it's the first thing in the morning. The next morning, Vic rushes on his mountain bike to the picnic spot, charging towards Tony's body. On the other hand, Melinda is looking for Vic around the house, and she reaches the basement where she finds Tony's wallet in a box. As a result, she becomes sure that Vic killed Tony and all her previous lovers. Meanwhile, Vic grabs a stick and tries to push Tony's body to the river bottom. As he is doing this, Don suddenly shows up, asking him what he's doing in the river. Vic tries to avoid the conversation and make an excuse, but Don notices Tony's arm floating. Scared, Don immediately gets into his car, telling Vic he's going to jail. Vic chases after Don on his mountain bike, but can't catch up. Then, Vic takes a shortcut and falls in front of Don's car, causing Don to swerve and fall into the river, dying on the spot. In the final scene, Vic comes back home after confirming Don's death. There, he finds Melinda waiting for him on the stairs, just like at the beginning of the movie. She stares at him for a while, finally revealing Tony's wallet. The movie ends with Melinda burning Tony's wallet, indicating that she lives with Vic and Trixie. If you enjoy this video, please give a like and subscribe our channel. Thanks for watching.